Welcome to this step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial of some gorgeous thistles in a meadow. This tutorial is suitable for beginners. I'm going to take you through a very simple colour palette and basic sort of acrylic techniques, talking about how to make a stay wet palette and just building up this painting um, to show you how to create that detail in a quite an impressionistic style. If you would like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget if you haven't already to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will get updates of my latest videos. So shall we get started? This is the beautiful reference photograph I will be using or interpreting. Um, a link for this can be found in the description below along with a full list of the materials I'm going to be using, the colours and alternatives. I've made myself a stay wet palette that's to stop the paints from drying out. Um, I've got an old plastic box and I've lined it with some paper towel, wet the paper towel so it's damp and then I've lined it with some grease proof paper. I've put the acrylic paints on top and what happens is, is a process called osmosis. The damp paper towel seeps through or goes through the um, grease proof paper and it stops those acrylic paints from drying out. Once the paper towel dries out, so will the acrylic paints. You've got to keep that paper towel damp, especially if you want to use this palette maybe the next day. And I know some artists have kept their palettes like this in the fridge. I'm not saying doing that, but it does seem to help stop that paper towel drying out. Just have to get a painting fridge. I've squeezed out some white titanium paint and starting from the left I've got a yellow, like a cadmium yellow, I've got a mid green, a black, a burnt sienna, a pretty pink and a pretty blue. So you can just use any pink, any blue, any yellow and any green. Um, it's just to get you started because everyone's going to have slightly different colours so in this way you should be able to get the same sort of colours as what I'm getting and I'll guide you through that. I'm using a canvas board, it's been primed and it's 12 by 10 inches, it's qu I quite like painting on canvas boards. And the other thing about, the great thing about acrylics is that if you don't like what you've done, you can paint over the top afterwards. I've sketched an outline for my painting here. I've used an HB pencil. I don't often do this, but I just wanted to kind of show you the composition. Sometimes I'll just paint one colour in the background just to start me off. But this way, I'm starting slightly differently. I'm going to dilute the acrylic paints so that I can see the pencil outlines through the paint. And it's another way of just starting an acrylic painting. And it's quite nice, especially if you're a beginner. Using a flat three quarter inch synthetic brush, I'm only using one brush, believe it or not. It just makes things so much easier. I mixed up some of the green and yellow and some of the green and black and added lots and lots of water. I'm applying this now with this flat three quarter inch brush a wet on dry quite dilute to the dark sort of background trees and just carefully painting around the outline drawing for the thistles and I want to be able to see some of those pencil lines coming through as well it's just a guide don't worry if you paint over those pencil lines or can't see them it's just to get you going now this is some yellow and a touch of the green and I'm just painting along the horizon line where it's a lot lot lighter and now I'm painting around these thistles still with just this one brush it just simplifies everything just keeping these basic colours and I'm going to take you through these basic techniques just dilute paint and here you see I've just sort of covered all of the canvas there and I'm using brusho which is kind of like a crystallised powdered inks and you can actually activate them by sprinkling them onto a wet surface or spritzing them with a spritzer bottle and it just creates these lovely textured effects and different colours sort of come out of these powders as well so I'm putting black and moss green on there but if you don't have brush show don't worry it's just a fun thing to do just to get this painting going you know get some paint on there so I'm using some of this pink here and just painting sort of kind of wet on dry. Obviously, some of the green is still wet. But I'm not worried about it. And it's slightly dilute as well. Still using that flat three quarter inch brush. And just to say, I will have a link in the description below uh, a video I made all about brush show if you're interested in using that medium. I decided I'd actually sprinkle a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is a really nice pink um, brush show colour onto the area where the 
thistles are. So now my painting has dried. Really make sure your painting has dried. I, I dried it with a blow dryer. Um, make sure that everything's not too wet when you do that otherwise all your paint goes flying everywhere and I think I was a little bit guilty of that but I was in a bit of a hurry um, I'm using a little bit of blue and white there and just painting some of those marks and that's the sky coming through the trees wet on dry with my three quarter inch brush I'm using some of the black and green now mixed together and I'm painting in the darkest darks. A lot of the times with acrylics we work dark to light so I'll try to get on all my darkest tones even though I've actually obviously put some light on as well. I really love painting in this way. It's quite an impressionistic style. There's a little bit of green I've thrown on there as well. So when you've got your colours sort of... Um, like that in the palette sort of lined up you can pull the color down and then mix beneath it and obviously because that paper towel is coming through that grease proof paper it's keeping the um, palette paint that I'm mixing from drying out as well. When you're painting acrylics always keep getting fresh paint all the time so you just sort of make a few marks get a little bit more paint and try not to paint when the uh, when it's starting to dry give it a blow dry. If your paint is drying very quickly, you can get a retarder. Um, it's a little tube of um, medium that you can get that slows down the drying process. Or just add a little bit of water to your acrylics. Not too much because it actually changes them. It be become more like watercolors, less like acrylics, and they won't be as permanent as acrylics. So, um, and obviously as opaque, they become transparent like watercolor. But what I'm doing is, is I'm using all of the brush here, the flat of the brush, the corner of the brush, the tip of the brush to create all of these different darks here, trying to be really expressive, half closing my eyes, looking at the photograph, not copying it as such, just trying to get a, a sort of feeling of those trees in the background, a look of them. And I've mixed up a little bit of the yellow with the green. And remember, any green will do, any yellow will do, just to put some lighter tones on the foliage there. And I'm actually blending with my fingertips as well, just to kind of create some nice soft edges. So if it all looks a bit angular with the mark making, you can blend it with your fingertips. So I'm painting some of the pink now. Uh, straight from the tube as I did with the foliage here in the distance and I'm using the tip of the brush as well just to get the petals on the thistles here and just trying to be really expressive as I go. Um, as you can see there the brush show has done its work really because they've all become a bit of a cluster so I'm using a little bit of artistic license here just to pick out shapes and this is the fun way of painting because you're not exactly copying a photograph here. You're using it as a reference, using lots of guidance with the photo photograph. You've got that dark against light with the background of the foliage, but all that light coloured field with the pretty thistle there growing and the balance of the light through the trees. So there's lots going on here. And where the brusho has, I mean, there's a big explosive amount of brusho work in the right bottom right hand corner. I'm going to try and leave as much of that as I can. Um, I have painted over other bits of the brush show and you can decide if you are using brush show which bits you want to keep and which bits you want to paint over. I'm using some yellow ochre and some yellow with a touch of the green. If you don't have a green paint, you can use blue. It's absolutely fine. Yellow and blue make green, but it's a very light green as it is in the photograph and I'm varying the colours with a little bit of the yellow ochre to warm it up as well and I'm just sort of painting in between the thistle and around sort of coating that area but left a lot of the brush -o area as well and I'm going to let my painting dry again. So my painting has dried and I'm using, as I pointed out there, the corner, the tip of the brush there to create these little light marks coming through from the sky. Try to vary them. And actually, in this instance, have a look at that photograph. Look at the shapes here. They're very abstract, but looking from a distance, you stood back, half close your eyes. It does look like the light coming in, the sky behind those trees there. And it's a lot of fun to do and it's quite rewarding when it pays off. So I really love doing things like this. It's a very impressionistic style. I'm just going in on top now with some just pure white paint, just to give a little bit more sparkle to some of that light there. 
and I'm using a quinacridone magenta which is a darker pink here and just painting sort of underneath the petals um, just to create a little bit more dark on these thistles. It's always a good idea to vary your brush marks. I'm only using this one brush, but it's really getting me to think how I can get these marks, how I can paint on these darks and these details here. And uh, looking back now, I wish I'd actually paint a little, touch a little bit more blue in with that magenta just to create a touch more dark. So maybe you can think about that. And I'm painting just underneath the thistles now using a bit of burnt sienna and a touch of black, really trying to get that sort of almost a sort of cone shape there. And just painting this wet on dry with this flat three quarter inch brush. And I've actually painted a few sort of dead heads there as well, about three actually. So, so again, sort of looking at the photograph, but I'm kind of going with my own imagination as well. I'm using some of the um, pink and the yellow just to create a, a sort of a lighter um, colour on the right hand side here and just painting that sort of wet into wet because the paint is still wet. If your paint is dry don't worry and I've just mixed up a little bit of red and yellow for that sort of orangey look that I can see there as well. You may interpret the colours differently so paint the colours that you see. I always think it's more important about how dark and light a colour is rather than what colour it is. Obviously we want colour harmony but I do think things look more 3D when you get the tonal values right i.e the dark trees in the background really make those lovely thistles come forward because they are lighter in tone this is a really fun but challenging bit but i've got a very flat brush here and i'm going to use the tip of it to paint these really thin stems um, if you don't want to do this do use a very sort of small round brush or a rigger or you could use a bit of card and I will show you that technique later but I'm just using the tip the top edge of the flat brush here and just sort of not putting too much pressure and just sort of resting my brush and then just pulling it down I'm just painting in leaves now putting a bit of pressure pressing and then lifting and twisting and turning for these leaves so you can create all these different marks just using this one brush so again just getting the paint on the on my brush pulling that thin line down and then pressing and twisting and getting all these lovely leaves. The shade is a quite a dark colour so this is dark against this light background and I'm just sort of plotting in all these stems here trying to give all the thistles and the dead heads and the buds some um, stems to go on underneath them and uh, sort of even just sort of blocking my way through there to the thistles that are behind as well. And again, putting lots of leaves in there and trying to vary the leaves. So have some small, some large and have them sort of painted in different directions. Again, you can use the photograph as a reference for that, but always try to vary things. I've just mixed up a really light green. That's the yellow with the green there. Lots of yellow. And I'm just printing a little bit of light on the stems here as well. And that will pull those thistles and the stems forward away even from the light background and I'm going to paint in some lighter leaves as well here and there again as you can see in the reference photograph but I'm not copying every leaf in the reference photograph I'm a bit of an impressionist at heart or an abstract or semi-abstract artist I don't really like to copy things I find I get very tight creatively this way I'm really free I'm thinking of ideas you know testing things out and the great thing about acrylics if it goes wrong you can just paint over the top or if it goes wrong you can just wet it right now if I painted a stem incorrectly or not right you can just wet it and then lift it off and I'll show you that in a minute so I painted some very thin light stems up into the dark trees I'm using some watercolor paper here so it's quite thick it's 300 grams I'm painting the edge of the paper so you could use card as well but you want it quite thin and I'm printing I'm painting on the edge and then I'm printing with the um, side of the watercolour paper there. I find sometimes this works better if I'm actually printing it onto acrylic paper because canvas boards sort of almost resist it slightly but it's kind of going on there okay so I'm trying to vary so I'm actually curving the watercolour paper somewhat as well to get them sort of curving and bending in the breeze rather than all looking very stiff and upright but you can have some that are upright as well again vary these 
stems here. I'm just painting some of the detail here as well with the tip of my brush using a very sort of light yellow ochre yellow with a touch of the green there just varying the colors I've just added a little bit more of an orangey shade with the red and the yellow and just painting this foliage this light color foliage wet on dry against those dark trees it really pulls those uh, them forward and creates depth in the painting <music> So I've allowed my painting to dry and I've mixed up some yellow, the yellow ochre and some white and I'm just putting a few little sparkly highlights on the right hand side here and it creates a bit of texture as well. Remember I'm just still using this three quarter inch flat brush and I'm trying to use just the very tip of the corner for the detail. If you find this tricky, I completely understand, so do go to a smaller brush. It's just really using this larger brush just to make you use it as much as you possibly can, so it, it stretches you to create these different marks, but I do understand, I mean, I'm painting for a long time, so easy for me to say, isn't it? But um, I would definitely go to a smaller brush if you're finding it tricky. Um, don't worry, I won't tell. Um, but I'm just painting on a little bit of dark now on the left hand side. Now the reason why I'm doing this because sometimes and you'll find this you're painting away you put your darks on you're working dark to light and then suddenly you put your lights on and your darks have gone and it's just because what we do we don't know we're doing it even we lose our dark so always go back in and refresh those darks if you need to or maybe you didn't judge them to be dark enough beforehand now you've put the light on the dark just doesn't look dark enough so you can go straight back in with some darks hope that made sense. That's how I work anyway. And that's the beauty again of acrylics. You can keep changing things. So I've mixed up a little bit of white in my pink here. I'm using the very tip of the brush just to create these very sort of thin petals. So it's creating a bit of texture, detail and light here and there. So I'm just painting them sort of, not every little petal lighter, just sort of picking on a few here, the light hitting mainly the top of the petals as well but it sort of gives it a bit more, it makes them look a little bit more like thistles. Well, I hope so anyway. So I've decided instead of making those very thin petals, I've decided to kind of load my brush a bit more and paint slightly sort of fatter <laughs> petals. Um, I thought they looked a bit too spindly, so I'm actually just using the side, not the tip of my brush now, and just painting those in there with the white and the pink mixed together. I'm just painting on now, printing on just some white paint with the tip of my brush just to give that highlight on some of the petals there, wet on dry. I'm watering down the pink paint now. I should have used clean water, so pretend you don't see me using that green water uh, into the pink and I'm spattering, tapping the middle of my brush very firmly, um, this pink. I'm just adding a little bit more white there. Um, just watery enough that it comes off the brush but not too watery that it dries transparent so you just have, may have a little practice of this as well so I'm just tapping um, very firmly the brush just make sure you haven't got any valuables computers or anything where this paint might go on to because it can be very messy and if you don't like spattering you don't have to do this stage it's just a way of me just finishing my painting so I'm just mixing up some of the green now. I'm adding a little bit of water to it. So it's the light green, the green and the yellow mixed together. And I've just spattered that onto the foreground to finish off. A really useful tip is to use a mount 
to put round your painting to see if you need to do any more work to it. So I'm just put, putting it around my painting here just to assess it. It makes you very objective. And sometimes just looking at your painting the next day really helps as well. And I've decided I want to put a little bit more light um, on some of the grasses there and um, some of the foliage. Um, just using a mixture of white and the yellow ochre. And I'm printing this now on the bottom left hand corner and it's to balance out those light sort of grasses that are going up into the dark trees there. They were kind of pulling my eye away. And this is a way of anchoring things and balancing things. And the way I did that was looking at it through the mount. I didn't see that before. So um, don't, don't feel that pressure to over finish a painting. Let it rest, have a look at it, see if you need to do any more. But I've decided to leave it there for now. I really hope you You've enjoyed this tutorial and it inspired you to maybe paint a meadow with some thistles or other wild flowers. If you have any questions about this tutorial please put them in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.